Okay, we're back. Sorry for the delay, some technical difficulties on uh, on our end. I don't know if the live stream was actually going or the audio was not working, but I think we're back. Um, we're all set. Uh, what I was saying was before we start talking about Pimlico for tomorrow, I encourage you to go to formtowin.com, uh, download the app if you're using a PC or um, the uh, Form to Win also works on your, actually I think it works better on your phone or on your tablet. So go to the uh, Android store or the Apple store depending on what sort of device that you have. Uh, download the app, it's free. Uh, go ahead and create an account, uh, that's free also. And what that does is that'll give you two free live races a day. To, you know, actually use the app, uh, play around with the filters, as well as you'll have all the um, last few days of historical races so you can go in see who the winner of each of these races were, and see if you could have found the winner uh, using the, the app. But before I dive into Pimlico's card for tomorrow, um, to show you my bobblehead here, this is a bobblehead of the, the one and only bobblehead that I own. Uh, this is Ben's cat, uh, five-time winner of the uh, Jim McKay Turf Sprint, a real war horse, one of my favorites. Um, always had his head down at the wire, just the horse loved to win. And uh, rest in peace, unfortunately, he did pass away uh, not, too, not too long after retirement, I believe. Um, but yeah, Ben's cat, always like to, you can watch his videos on, his races on YouTube, that's what I was doing a little bit yesterday, just to bring back some of those, those good memories of that great, uh, just a solid war horse all the way around. Uh, but looking at the Pimlico races specifically, um, using Form to Win for tomorrow, and let's see. I guess the stage races, I believe, start at race eight. Now, I haven't looked at race eight. I kind of looked at race starting at race nine, um, looking at that late pick five, which looks like a I don't know, I think a pretty challenging sequence. Um, but we will start with uh, race eight, and then I'm gonna move myself off screen here so we can look at the filters. Uh, looks like this is a nine furlong race, We're going a mile and an eighth on the main track. Uh, and so the first thing you, you wanna do when you go into four and win, click the analyze tab, and you're gonna see a lot of columns here, or rows. Um, you know, post position, horse, the odds, and that's morning line. Uh, best form to win time, average form to win time, worst form to win time, average equibase, best equibase, worst equibase, total starts, the full date. You know, if you're looking at younger horses, sometimes, you know, the earlier the full date on two year olds, maybe they, they may be more. Uh, I don't know, sometimes they have a head start on some of the ones that are later foals, um, but uh, that only really applies on, on younger races, baby races. Um, average weight carried, race weight, average race differential. So basically this is a ton of information and I'm not expecting you to consume it all or actually use it all on an everyday basis. So what I like to do, and this is just me personally, you, you go down here, you click on this little filter tab and if you unhighlight the things that you don't want to see, it will take them off your grid here. So I'm really going to focus on primarily two categories, uh, the average equibase speed figure and the average form to win time. Um, this, this time that we've calculated is probably the best thing in the entire app. Uh, it's a, um, a logarithm that we've developed and it's purely speed based, does not take into account trip or pace or anything like that. It's purely a speed based number um, and we have found that it is probably the most successful identifier for, uh, for horses that are expected to win or run very competitively. Um, but we are going to look at this race and we're going nine furlongs on the dirt, mile and eighth. So I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna set up a filter. You click on this tab right here. And so for a mile and an eighth or nine furlongs, 
I like to look at races between a mile and a sixteenth, which is eight and a half furlongs, and nine. So we'll just change that to nine because I'm really trying to drill down the data. And then track condition, I will just look at all dirt. I'm going to hit apply. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to sort by clicking on the, uh, on the uh, row here. I'm going to sort it from the average equal base from highest to lowest. So it's six, eight, five, and then on average form to win, it's three, five. Uh, and that's the most, let's see, do we have any dual qualifiers? Horologist was top five in average, or top three, excuse me, in average Equibase speed figure, and she was second in average form to win. So right away, she's a dual qualifier, so I would have her on my tickets, and Spice is nice also. Uh, she fits, she's the fastest on form to win with a sample size of three. So nothing too creative here. I mean, I haven't looked at the pace of this race, um, but it looks like your top two choices, at least in the morning line, are uh, are, are ranked one two. And you know, horologist is, is the dual qualifier. So if I were going to play this race, I'd probably key off of her. Um, and that's how Form to Win quickly looks at that race. Like honestly, we spent thirty seconds on it. Um, but I like horologist. I believe she's a. Uh, I don't know if she's a New Jersey bred or a Maryland bred. Uh, let's see. She is. Yeah, New Jersey bred, and I know she was put into Billmont's barn uh, last year. But I actually liked her before she was put in Billmont's barn, and she's um, just seemed to get better. So I would key on horologist there, and then mix some of these other horses in. Although honestly, form to win it looks like a chalky. A chalky race uh, with Spice and Ice and Horologist. I don't see. I mean, this landing zone kind of fits on three starts at 20 to 1. Maybe on the bottom of an exotic, but um, you're going to have to beat, beat the chalk in the first and second place um, to really make anything on there. So let's move on. Nothing, nothing uh, too, uh, too interesting there from a price standpoint. Now, race. Nine is a five furlong turf sprint. I love handicapping these things. Uh, they opportunities for chaos trips do make a difference, um, but you really want to try to tighten up your tickets where you can, unless you're going to use the all button, which I have not used. Not saying that you shouldn't use it, but I try to drill down my tickets just a little bit more. So for this particular race, five furlong sprints, I set my filter. Once again, if you want to look at the race, rest, uh, excuse me, race data, it's five furlongs, we're on the turf. I think we're going to be fine in terms of, I think it'll be firm tomorrow. So for five furlong races, I set my distances to look at five and races between five and five and a half. And as I explained on the Steve Vick radio show, I don't look at anything other than five. I will not look at between five and six. Not saying that you... You don't, or you don't want to, but I personally just think that a five furlong horse or a five and a half furlong horse is, it tends to be a little bit sharper than a six furlong horse. So I'm, if we have a good data set here when I use this filter, that's what I'm gonna go with. So track condition, I'll go all turf, and I'll hit apply. And it's funny, I did look at this race using standard PPs last night, and that's the horse that I landed on, the 12, uh, gotta go Mo, and now I feel like uh, I'm on to something here. We'll see because Form to Win has, at least on average, Form to Win time with three starts, um, has him ranked first. So that's very interesting. Caravel Fitz and Dixie Land, Dixie Candy Land. So you know, for the multis. Of course, you're going to use those, but that's the price. Let's see where they fit on average equibase. Okay, so we only have one dual qualifier. So the 11 horse is in the top three, the Victory Kingdom and Catch a Bid. Um, top three in, in average equibase, but then when I go use the form to win time, which I really like, Dixie Land, Dixie Candy Land, excuse me, the 11 horse still fits. So the 11, I would have to put on my tickets for the multis. Um, but I do like the 12. Uh, 
got to go Mo. I think she can sit off the early speed. And I like that, you know, I like that 12, that 12 post for her particularly because she's not going to really have to, I think she can stay in close contact with the leaders. There seems to be a, a decent amount of pace in this race. And I think the 12 can stay close. And Form to Win has her ranked fairly high. Uh, so I will, I don't know if I'm going to use all three. Uh, I am going to try to beat the five victory kingdom. Um, likes to come from out of it. But there was something else about that horse I didn't, I didn't like. Let's see. Uh, Yeah, I was thinking maybe that Victory Kingdom, the five furlongs may be a bit sharp. Uh, but you do get Flavian Pride, so interesting. But uh, I don't know. We'll see. Um, and I believe this Victory Kingdom, um, the five horse, I believe this is its last race. And then uh, she's going to be retired. The mayor's going to be retired after that. But I'm going to try to key on the 12. Uh, Got to go, Mo. And uh, for John Kimmel, and you get Jose Ortiz in the saddle. I don't think I have anything else interesting here. So I'll go narrow uh, in this particular race. And I might even single uh, the pick five, depending on what the budget's going to be, uh, using the, the 12 only. Um, but that's how Form to Win has the uh, the race looked up. We have one dual qualifier in Dixie, Dixie and Candyland who fit on average Equibase and is ranked third in Form to Win. And then, you know, got to go most the price horse at 8 to 1, uh, break it from the outside, who I like a bit. So we'll see if we can get through race 9 tomorrow at Pimlico. Let's go to race 10. This is a six furlong. Uh, dirt race. This is the Miss Preakness. We're going to have plenty of data to work with. Starts here, three, five, nine. So not concerned about starts. Uh, we, for six furlong dirt races, I look at races between six and six and a half. So I'll just adjust my filter here between six and six and a half. Track condition, all dirt. We're going to sort from lowest to highest. And then I hit apply. Okay, so we've got Red Ghost, Abrogate, and Prodigy Doll are the top three in average equal base at the distance. Now, Red Ghost only has one start uh, at this distance, or at least between six and six and a half on the dirt. I believe, I believe he ran on the turf once at Kentucky Downs, um, but we're only factoring in his one dirt race that fit. And then average form to win, Red Ghost fits again. It pushed Abrogate down a little bit. And Street Loot is interesting. It, it really pushed Prodigy Doll down. So I'm not going to use Prodigy Doll. So Red Ghost is a dual qualifier. Was top in average equal base and also top in average formed win. Now, I will say it's only one start. And when I was looking at the PPs, I believe this horse is coming back on a little bit of short rest. So. You know, there's two ways you can look at that on with the with these horses. They're coming back because they're they're doing well, and they're just wheeling them right back. Yeah, Red Ghost last ran um, April 16th, and actually I can show you. So if you hit the comparator, and then you sort it by distance and packed, you can see these are color coded. These, these are the where the horses. Um, these are the traditional PPs where they finished. So. Red Ghost last ran 20, well, he did get a little bit of a break. I thought he was coming back relatively quick, quicker than that. Uh, 28 days ago, um, no, that can't be right. Yeah, April 16th. Uh, well, let's see. April 16th, so yeah, still relatively short breath. He won at Keeneland, uh, was an allowance race. But you can see, we color coat the the um, where their placings. So red is first, green is second, yellow is third, blue is fourth, and anything other than the top four is always going to be brown. So obviously, this looks like a competitive group. Honestly, you see lots of red in there. So that's a quick way to just you know see which horses like to win and which ones don't. But we've got a good group here. But I'll go back to the analyze. 
So I guess my only concern with Fred Ghost would be the quick turnaround. Um, and honestly, another thing to consider, because I've been marking up my PPs, last time ran on Lasix, and now it's coming off, uh, but did break its maiden at Saratoga without Lasix. So, of course, doesn't need it. Uh, doesn't look like um, that she needs it. Abrogate, who is ranked second. She didn't do really anything in the eight bells, but that was at seven furlongs. And I think she's more of a six furlong horse and she fits on form to win. And then let's look at Street Loot, who form to win had uh, last three races were on Lasix, but had won three races, three, yeah, three races before without. So not worried about uh, being off Lasix with, with Street Loot. And then the only other horse that I'm interested in a bit is, and I'm projecting here, so Form to Win doesn't have this horse ranked in the top. Well, this is the horse that I like a little bit, uh, Paradise Song, strictly from replay work. Uh, one for fun last time out. Now, that was a uh, 62 and a half, um, optional allowance but she won for fun and she looked geared down and her ears were pricked and I always like seeing that on a horse so I know she's stepping up in class but 10 to 1 on the morning line I'm a little bit interested in Paradise Song she last ran well she ran at 6 so let me see if I, if I drill down this information anymore so if we only look at 6 furlong races nah she doesn't move up too much um Joyful Cadence fits if you're only looking at six furlongs also. And that, that horse was interesting um, for trainer John Ortiz. Uh, and you do get Irad Ortiz in the saddle. Ran second to Abrogate last time out. And the Purple Mountain at uh, Oaklawn Park. And now you get Irad in the saddle. Um, now has been on Lasix the last two races, but... Uh, Joyful Cadence is by um, Run Happy, who, if you know Run Happy, never ran on Lasix, and he was a Breeders' Cup Sprint winner. So I'm not too concerned uh, coming off the Lasix here, but uh, fits on, Joyful Cadence fits on, on four to win too. So this, honestly, this is a contentious race, and I, you know, if you have a strong opinion, go with it. I do not. I would look for a price um, and kind of go from there. I don't trust some of these horses. Uh, at a short price so you know red ghost is your dual qualifier and uh joyful cadence is interesting at four to one maybe you try to beat abrogate here and then i'm gonna throw in paradise song strictly off of uh replay work and that is how we looked at the uh the misprint so we will move on now to race 11. So we're just blasting through these this is going to be a one mile turf race. And so for mile turf races using, using form to win, I want to look at two turn races on the turf. So I'm going to look at races between eight and eight and a half furlongs. Track condition, all turf. We'll sort it highest to lowest. So it's bubbles on ice, all to Mia Martina. An average equibase, and let's see if we have any dual qualifiers. Alda and Mia Martina. So those are the two that I would be interested in. Um, without looking at at the pace dynamics of the race, but I know that Alda she uh, she ran second last year, I believe, in a uh, yeah the grade grade one Natalma up at Woodbine, and she uh, she didn't really do much in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. Actually, she didn't do great at all. She finished 12, beating 11 lengths. Um, looks like she got a freshening. She came back in April. And uh, Motion put her in a sprint race. So, not sure what that was all about. Um, well, Munnings, one of our Maria's Mon uh, Mayor. But she didn't really, she didn't run great. She finished six, beating four lengths. But I think back to a mile, she fits. And if you're a first-time Lasix person, she is getting in it in this race because this is not a graded stakes race, so these horses are allowed to run on Lasix. So I'd be interested in Alda and Mia Martina. 
you know, she last ran out, she was in the Gazelle at Aqueduct, which was on the dirt. Uh, maybe they're trying to make a dirt horse out of her, but she's proven on turf, two back. She won at Gulfstream, and I remember watching that race. She had a pretty good turn of foot. I know it was only a, a, a 75 K allowance race, but she showed a good turn of foot, and then they uh, she got a little bit of a freshening. Then she came back two months later in the Florida Oaks. Not sure what happened there. I didn't like the uh, ride taken back to last, and made a made a decent move, but basically came from tenth and ended up finishing fourth, beating three lengths. So back on her preferred surface after that uh, trial on the dirt and the Gazelle, uh, she fits also. So form to win likes Alda, Miss Martina. It, also like Seasons a little bit, but I know Seasons is coming off of a layoff, hasn't raced since September, and I'm going to say that she may need, to ra she may need a race. Um, not that Jimmy Toner can't get him ready, but I will uh, play against her in this spot and maybe just try to squeak by with Alder or Miss Martina, but Bubbles on Ice is interesting also. Um, doesn't necessarily fit on form to win. But she did fit on average Equibase, and she's trained by Christopher Clement, and she's also first time LASIK. So that is an interesting version of the Hilltop. Uh, I'm probably going to key on Alda, and hopefully that turns out to be beneficial in the pocket. Uh, going to race 12. This is the Pimlico Special. This is a grade three. We're going. Um, a mile and three sixteenths, nine and a half furlongs. I will look at races between, so, you know, a mile and three sixteenths is basically a mile and a quarter. So I want to look at races between a mile and an eighth or nine furlongs and up. Track condition, all dirt. We'll hit apply. Average Equibase is last. Judgment, always mining and fearless. Let's see if we have any dual qualifiers. You factoring in our form to win. We've got fearless. He's the only one that's in the top three. Um, but nothing creative there. I mean, Cordmaker, actually, Cordmaker fits. He's got four races, 15 to one shot. I didn't have a mark on him. Looks like he's going to go to, he's, he's going to show some, some pace probably. But Last Judgment also wants to show some pace in this race. And uh, Cordmaker is coming off lay six as a six year old. Um, you know, read into that what you want. You just have to make note of these horses that, that are coming off and, and ones that are proven without running on it. Um, let's see, Fearless. Fearless won the Gulfstream Park Mile, which was a grade two off Lasix and came back at Oaklawn, went back on Lasix, ran at the grade two Oaklawn Handicap, ran, ran a good second to, to Silver State and uh, Todd points him right here um, with Irad. So Fearless is the dual qualifier. Maybe you try to skip by with, with him um, as the morning line favorite, but uh, not me because I'm gonna use Enforceable and I'll tell you why he's ranked third on form to win. Now, this horse, <laughs> he's by Tappet, and his like he is not consistent at all. He runs a great race, and then he goes missing, MIA, uh, and he's nowhere to be found in this next race. But I liked his race in the New Orleans Classic, which was a grade two going a mile and an eighth. Um, Chess, Chess Chief for uh, Dallas won that race, beat, a, beat Owendale by a head, but Enforceable made a good run, and uh, I believe he was on the rail, if my memory serves me right. Um, and I liked his gallop out. So, you know, Mark points him here, and he's a price at 10 to 1, and he fits on for him to win. So I'm gonna, I, I like Enforceable. Now, who knows which which version of Enforceable is going to show up? The one that ran a, a really good third last time out, or the one that was nowhere to be found in the mind shaft. We just don't know with this horse, but he still has some talent. I think he's still trying to put it all together, and I think Mark is trying to figure him out too. But uh, you know, the price is ten to one, so it's worth a shot. So for me in this particular race, I'm going to squeak by with four, Fearless. Try to squeak by with Fearless. And I like that price on, uh, on Enforceable, and hopefully that holds up. But that's how Form to Win sees uh, race 12 tomorrow at Pimlico. 
And then we'll go to the Black Eyed Susan, a mile and an eighth on the main track. So I will look at races between a mile and a sixteenth or eight and a half furlongs and nine. Track condition, all dirt. Army Wife, Forever Boss, The Grass is Blue by Average Equibase, Average Form to Win. Uh, let's see. Wow, Forever Boss is the only horse that's a dual qualifier on. Uh, well, the problem is, well, 15 to 1, but we've only got one start. Um, looking to look at so one start for ice latte two starts for miss Leslie You know your favorite beautiful gift got pushed down a little bit um, but two starts She's ranked fourth on form to win And I don't know really I mean you we can look at races between a mile and a mile and eighth, but uh, I don't I don't know if I would use that filter because a mile horse is not necessarily a mile and eighth horse. Um, so I think that skews the the numbers a little bit. So honestly, this one you're probably going to have to dive a little more into the traditional PPs because we've only got one start um, for these, um, you know, for these distances on these uh, three-year-old fillies and just looking at the pps since i did look at those since we're gonna have to dig more into that um, without using form to win uh actually let me take the filter off altogether so without the filter it kind of likes army army wife who i made a note on looking at the traditional pp she finished third last time out in the gazelle which actually was a decent race i mean she was beaten six leagues by the winner search results who came back and finished a game second last time out in the kentucky oaks so uh, my problem with her, she's a little bit of a grinder, um, but you do get Joel Rosario, which you know you can't go wrong with Joel, and she is eight to one on the morning line, um, and she has proven off. Well, most of these will be proven off Lasix now that I'm looking at it. Uh, let's see if there was anybody worth mentioning. Oh yes, I like the seven. Miss Leslie at 15 to 1. I don't know if she's good enough to win, honestly. Um, I like the fact she's proven off Lasix. And I think something that you have to look at here is uh, the grass is blue, who is 6 to 1 on the morning line, okay, for Chad Brown. Now she'll be she'll be probably 6 to 1, maybe shorter because of the connection, Chad Brown and Irad. Um, but Miss Leslie beat her on December 26th at Laurel. I mean, only by a neck, but the price disparity between Beautiful Gift, and, or excuse me, not Beautiful Gift, The Grass is Blue is 6 to 1, and Miss Leslie, who is 15 to 1, I, I, I mean, I got to go with the higher price horse. Um, you know, she beat her a couple races back, and she's done nothing but, uh, let's see, since then, she finished second going six furlongs, so I'm not going to hold that against her. And then at Laurel, going seven furlongs. Looks like she got into some traffic trouble, and she finished sixth, and then they gave her a freshening. She comes back on April 24th, and she wins the Weber City. Looks like just an overnight stakes sit at the track. So, you know, hey, win at the track's always important, too. And, uh, you know, wheels back quickly, so read into that what you want. Um... But why not? I mean, she's 15 to 1. So, Miss Leslie for uh, Claudio Gonzalez. Maybe I'm reading something into that that's not there. But, you know, the price is right. I mean, the question is, what are you going to do with Beautiful Gift and Baffert? I won't get into my spiel on, on the goings of that gentleman. Because uh, I'll likely go off on a tangent, and that's not what I'm here for. But, um... The morning line favorite, I mean, breaking from post 10. You know, I mean, fits on pure speed numbers, although she was pushed down. Let's see. She was pushed down a bit on, uh, on form to win. Two starts at the distance. 
and she's uh, fourth. So, you know, sh short price. She's going to show some 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 pace, but so is Adventuring, uh, who's directly to her inside. So, if you want to try to beat her, which I am, um, and another thing about Beautiful Gift, she's been facing four horse fields out in California, and now she's facing you know full field of you know nine other fillies. So, but it is Baffert. So do with that what you want, um, but I'll try to beat them. And I don't know what to, honestly, I don't know what to do with Forever Boss for, for Kenny McPhee. I know she's ranked, with one start, she's ranked first on, on average form to win. That was an off the turf race at Keeneland, uh, four horse field. So she was impressive, um, but you know, Keeneland, or excuse me, Kenny was running around the grass, and I can understand why, being out of a uh, El Prado mayor. But she took to the dirt, although the dirt was rated good at Keeneland that day, so I don't know if that moved her up. Uh, by Tapature and his, uh, his offspring like mud also. So I don't know if it was the good track that moved her up. But once again, it's, the sample size is one. So I'm not going to put in any, a ton of stock into uh, how they rank on Formula 1 just with the limited, limited sample size. So for me in this race, honestly, I'm going to try to be favorite. I'll use Army Wife. I will use adventuring and miss leslie and try to try to beat baffert and in this uh, black eyed susan but as you can see we really just looked at that card that late pick five um relatively quickly just applying some simple simple filters here uh and um, just looking for average equal base looking for horses that fit on average equal base and average form to win and if I find any of those horses, I will use those because they are a dual qualifier. And that's what put us on Channel Cat last week at Belmont. He was the only dual qualifier in that race. And he did uh, nose out Goofo at a decent enough uh, of price. So dual qualifiers I use. And, uh, and any horse that uh, I think fits on form, to, on form to win. Because I do give a little more stock to the form to win time. Um, if I had to use one, I would use the, the form to win, but I'll fold in the average equal base also. So once again, appreciate your time. I know we flew through that, but that's the power of the app. Honestly, you set your filters and uh, you can really hammer through that. And I was, it was nice to see, that's the first time I've, I've run those races through it, that it landed on some of the horses that I liked on my, uh, on my PPs when I did the uh, pen to paper, so to say. So I appreciate your time. Once again, go to formtowin.com on your PC. Um, go to your app store on your phone, download it. If you have any questions, reach out to me on, on Twitter or DM me. Or if you have my cell, you can text me. Uh, look forward to talking about recapping this, I guess, next week on the uh, Steve Bick Show. Um, but as always, appreciate your time. Wish you the best of luck if you're playing tomorrow and or this weekend. And um, yeah, have a great time at the windows. I'll see you later, folks.